Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. For your nightly gold and silver news in the fascinating gold and silver community that we live in, where price doesn't necessarily move based on supply and demand, as many of our longer time viewers well know, but nonetheless, that doesn't mean the price will never move. It means the price may feel like it never moves, but let us dig into some of the exciting reasons why I think one day it will move. Um, least of which is that as hard as this may seem to believe for many gold and silver investors, I do believe the laws of supply and demand on some level do exist. <coughs> now, certainly, uh, as we learned throughout the last year, especially in the LBMA silver report, it's really more the supply and demand of the paper contracts yet. You know, there is still that degree. They don't want to get popped. I think they were getting popped a couple of weeks ago when gold went through 2000. As you can see on this chart right here, and not entirely a surprise because we are looking at the ETF. So this is GLD and the other, uh, well, I don't know if they're all fraudulent <laughs> gold ETFs. I mean, I kind of lump them in with the silver ones, but in either case, this is just imagine GLD and other similar products. You see the yellow line here is the gold price. And that peak up there was the, oh, I guess two weeks ago, yesterday, I believe, when gold got above 2000 then went down despite the fact that the reasons that drove it above 2000 have only escalated since then. So if we had Rosty Cam going and we were wiring up my boy, my guess is that he probably was called, <laughs> what? Give me a moment here. I'm gonna think of how I can phrase this with making it as inflammatory towards Ross as possible while not getting anybody else in trouble. Let's just say I have some strong reason to believe that Ross was calling some other government officials like yelling the felon, maybe some guy named Jerome and uh, Gensler. You, that's actually the plunge reduction team. I can't believe it <laughs> sometimes. Those four. And, you know, depending on where you look up who's in the plunge protection team, you know, they phrase it sometimes Federal Reserve Board of Directors, but I think it's actually the chairman. And if anyone's wondering why I'm making a big deal out of the plunge protection team, I still remember back on the trading floor, you know, you go into the floor sometimes and there's a big move overnight that made no sense. And you would hear, well, they intervened in the yen, which actually happened a lot. Um, who is the they? That's the plunge protection team. These four goons. So basically... <laughs> As, as we'll get to. In fact, we can just take a quick skip there now. Shared this one last week. No, not that one. Uh, where is Yellen the Felon? There she is. Here's the Exchange Stabilization Fund, lump, you know, that does together with the New York Fed morphed into the plunge protection team. So it's this globule of government fraud. ESF was created in 1934 to provide support to the U.S. dollar. How? <laughs> By taking your gold for the good of the nation. So while Hoover was having farmers burn a third of their crops as people were starving to death, they figured that if they took the gold, gave you 21 bucks for it, then revalued it at 35, that was going to keep you safe, just like triple vaccination that hasn't helped Obama or some of these other guys. So odd government policies, yet nonetheless, the effect was that now you have billions of dollars here. And uh, during that CARES Act in 2020, which didn't really care so much about the people, basically handed Mnuchin, it looks like 500 billion. Uh, maybe some of it went here, some of it went there, but go down here, the Exchange Stabilization Fund is governed by Section 5302 of Title 31 of the U.S. Code. I'm guessing something that Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, or any of these other guys have never read. Uh, but here we go. Subject to approval by the president. <laughs> so, I'd love to know how that goes. Hey, Joe, can we, can we smash some bits in the gold market? Uh, at least based on the press conferences. I wonder if, you know, Joe likes start answering and then, you know, and as someone who's been guilty of this myself to like forget the question halfway through. Uh, but anyway, if Joe remembers the question, 
Um, as you see here, the secretary, an agency designated by the secretary, who's yelling the felon, with the approval of the president, Petajo, may deal, and that's P-E-T-A, -E or I don't know how you would spell something like that, but may deal in gold, foreign exchange, and other instruments of credit, securities. Wow. <laughs> There's Mnuchin from Goldman Sachs. I wonder if he knows Jeff. <laughs> Does Mnuchin know how to hedge shares of GLD by hitting bids on the COMEX? <laughs> so anyway, that's how that goes. And in response, you have people buying a lot of gold in these ETF shares. <coughs> Excuse me. Not exactly the way I would do it. Um, I have a few pieces of gold. When my father passed away, there was like a couple of rings and a bracelet here and there. I don't I don't think I actually own a gold coin at this point. So obviously I would opt silver myself, not saying that's what anyone else should do. And, you know, I think gold's great and all that, but you can see right here, that's really like right around when, I think it was February 24th, the day that uh, the conflict began and all these blue bars are showing a lot of gold going in, at least the most in a while, aside from that spike there. Now, for full perspective, this is not by any means, this isn't like silver squeeze where that was just like blowing away anything that had happened historically. Although, interestingly, you look back on the two-year chart, and we're in March now. So this was right around when that whole COVID thing happened. And then, as you remember, so let's call it March of 2020, COVID happened, silver is down below 12 bucks. Here's gold going down. Let's back that out a little bit, see how far. Okay, so there you go. There's your March of 2020. The price is the yellow line, spikes down. <laughs> you can see, of course, when it spikes down. Massive additions, which is probably Jeff and Steve Mnuchin buying. Um, but in either case, you see price goes down in the midst of chaos. A lot of there's a big chunk of buying, not just that one continued throughout there. And then shortly after that, we had gold hitting 2000 for the first time. OK, so let's see if there's any similarities. Now we have new uh, I don't want to call this false flag in Russia. I mean, I think the reasons the Biden uh, team is selling are beyond disturbingly false. Um, you know, but I think, you know, obviously it seems like something is actually happening and weapons are flying here and there. Um, now, we saw a brief spike above 2000, and I would suggest that the reasons that happened, again, have only been exacerbated since then. So how much will uh, Rosti and the gang, that's actually taxpayer money they take. <laughs> so they steal money to, then so that anyone who understands what they're stealing the money for and tries to invest to get away from that, then they hammer them. And not to pick on the US tonight, but like these are the kind of reasons why I left because I didn't feel safe. You know, a large part of that to me maybe was, you know, started changing, but was different when I was working for someone versus creating my own business. And I would suggest that many of the people who have gone through the entrepreneurial process uh, might feel similarly and you know, certainly the conditions for capital flight are in place. And as we will get to in uh, the remainder of tonight's video, certainly not an ideal supply chain setup. So anyway, I thought that was worth pointing out again, not that let's go at the 20 year. This is not unprecedented, but certainly worth keeping an eye on because at least from a one year perspective, you can see there's been some activity picking up. And actually, one last thing I will mention here is that if you look on the two year, so you see here, let's call that January, February, March. So right around the silver squeeze time when the gold started coming out, now still not more than there, but certainly a pickup there. So I just thought that was interesting, worth keeping an eye on. Wanted to pass that along and we'll dig into some of the reasons why that could be happening. Now, silver, not quite the same picture. If you look at the six month, uh, you know, a couple inflows, but also a couple outflows. 
And here, obviously, you see the clear break during Silver Squeeze. And uh, I guess one quick note on that, I did finish my letter. I'm not going to reveal too much about this, but I have been in contact with a lawyer, was the lawyer that I really was hoping to be able to reach. Uh, I'll leave them nameless for now. And uh, we had a conversation, finding out a little bit of information. And then I wrote a, uh, ended up being 31 pages, but it's nice because it really lays out, you know, what happened here. You know, the stuff Jeff Curry said, the stuff Ross said, LBMA report, you know, the miscount and all of that. So uh, we'll get that up on the site eventually, but I think it'll be something, whatever this lawyer says, if somebody else has their own lawyer, we're at least uh, putting things in a nice chronological order so that you know, somebody was starting from day one and said, hey, all right, you know, here's silver manipulation. Can you show me a quick example? And so far, it seems the feedback from what I wrote uh, is that came out and really hit that target well. So uh, good news. See, Colin Gooch wants a chopper bed and an update on that. Um uh is that we are figuring out the plan to finally sell those we've actually been able to make them for a while and we're gonna do uh, i think we're gonna do like a first batch run for like the super fans out there and then uh make them more widely available so we're, we're figuring that out and uh you know we will keep you posted uh grant nate thank you for writing and having the attorney proof it, chris my prayers for you and all of us well thank you grant for being here and sharing some kind energy uh nice to see everyone belly dancer of arabia grant dancing with myself thomas uh so thank you all for being here tonight appreciate that nice to talk some gold and silver anyway you see the silver chart there not too much doing um although here is a uh, interesting one u.s senator cornian Foreign central banks should remove all of their gold from the New York Fed as soon as possible before we sanction or seize it. Uh, now, I think that might be <laughs> Luke's uh, funny interpretation of what she said, but here Corin met with U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen to discuss Russian gold sanctions. Oh, that certainly is... Uh, one of the reasons why I can't say that I know this for sure, but it seems like the decision has been made to crash and burn this thing. I don't know how else to read. I mean, it's like they're they're showing the, like, here's my Achilles, come strike it in a very fragile gold market. So are they going to do this um, while... Uh, while Ross is tamping it down. I mean, what, what is the play here? It's, you know, and I guess that's one of the things I've realized is just keep these things in mind. Sometimes it doesn't make sense today, but there'll be some story tomorrow that puts it into clarity, but just reporting that uh, they're, they're still going on this one. So let's uh, click here. Oh, not any further detail, but we've been hearing rumors of that. And I don't know what that would actually mean, but if gold, if Russia is going to keep its gold and silver and metals off of the markets, I would be curious to see. <laughs> I'd love to hear Jeff Curry's take on that. So. <clears throat> As you can see here, it looks like the uh, short position has been blowing out pretty solidly. So Banks getting more short in the face of this, trying to contain the price is how I would read that. And uh, let's see, the last time uh, here they got really short and things go down, then jump back up. I don't know if there's any solid takeaways from here other than they're very short. And should the price go up and they have to, in their face, they could conceivably have to cover at a higher level, which would make many gold and silver fans happy. Um, watch out for the smash down at any time and we'll see how that goes um and here we have the picture in silver where you see the short position had come in quite a bit now blowing out um you got to sell a lot of contracts to keep the price under uh 26 even in the face of supply chains breaking so 
that's basically how that works. Not exactly what they advertise on your Goldman Sachs prospectus, but in terms of all this uh, conflict, and you know, sometimes you see the headlines, oh, everything's fixed and it's getting better. Um, and that leads the stock market to rally in the face of higher interest rates, which if anyone else is confused by that too. Um, actually, we can uh, <laughs> explain that. Because here you see, where is it? It actually talks about the, uh, since stocks and bonds are securities in which the Treasury Secretary is allowed to intervene, Janet Yellen now sits upon her, upon her own plunge protection team. So we hear that they buy stocks. I mean, because normally you would think with interest rates going on and, you know, a lot of these businesses that the stocks represent pulling out of Russia, you know, meanwhile, people in the U.S. are facing lot higher prices on everything, which would not seemingly be the kind of environment that would lead to increased cash flows yet when the government is printing money to prop up some of these things and not telling anyone about it. That's, that's kind of how that works. Yet nonetheless, a close Putin ally warns nuclear dystopia is on the horizon. If U.S. destabilizes Russia, which they're doing their best to do so far, and um, yeah, doesn't seem like this Russian fellow likes that too much. Um, crucially, he said that in a scenario where the Americans succeed, here is the result. The largest nuclear power with an unstable political regime, weak leadership, a collapsed economy, and a maximum number of nuclear warheads aimed at targets in the U.S. and Europe. Well, there you go. That seems to be going well. Um, now, this site says Putin's highest paid propagandist. Um, I don't really know who this guy is or how to comment on that, but doesn't sound as if it's getting better at the moment, shall we say. And I mean, there seem to be some <coughs> uh, point of no return lines that have been crossed a while back. I mean, when the sanctions first started, then destroying the Russian economy and hammering the stock markets. Uh, you know, it, it seems like if there was any degree of, hey, well, look, you know, we got a lot of people counting on these food supply chains. And that's what really concerns me when I see the things that are happening where it's like, you know, now the, the wheat market. Well, let's just blow that out. Keep hammering things, uh, price control. them. That's that's one of the reasons why I often uh, have so little respect for people like Ross that facilitate that stuff, because we're. I hope this is not the case, but I mean, it sure seems like we're getting to the point where there's going to be food issues. I mean, it's like they keep leaving the foot on the neck <clears throat> until some of these things break. Uh, and, you know, I hope there's some good things going on behind the scenes, but anyway, uh, not ideal the way it's shaping up and hopefully people are staying safe out there and with that said, we will continue on here. <coughs> um, for anyone wondering a more detailed uh, view of what is actually going on inside Ukraine, um, you know, I hear things like this eight year CIA program helped provoke Russian invasion. CIA paramilitaries had been training Ukrainian forces on the front line of Donbass war against Russia backed separatists since 2014. We're only pulled out by Biden administration last month. I have not heard Joe Biden mention any of these things. I keep hearing a lot of stories like this popping up. A lot of people describing the folks associated with Zelensky as neo-Nazis. I've seen videos of swastika flags and things like that. <clears throat> Hard to know these days what is true. I've seen videos where they show footage of you know things being blown up and then they show... Uh, hey, this was used at, in Syria five years ago. So kind of hard to know what's real or not uh, these days, which is a little bit of a weird world to live in. But um, I keep seeing a lot of stuff like this, which, uh, you know, and I've heard some people say, oh, well, you're on the Russian side. Or I'm on the side of people who use common sense and treat others with respect. And uh, I'm not 
well versed enough with Putin to know his background, but I've seen plenty of the deep state and I see Joe Biden who already has a very uh, unpleasant track record. Uh, I see his son's name pop up in a whole host of nefarious thing using power to sell American assets type stuff. I have not dug into him. I'm, I'm hoping I can avoid that. Uh, and you know, this idea though, that, you know, Russia just is going and picking on some defenseless Ukrainians does not seem to match what I'm reading. So, uh, either case, understand that is a sensitive issue, but we'll leave that there. And what I was suggesting here is that this video, I'm not even a part of that one. How cool we got to put it on the channel. I didn't have to do it taking a day off there. So, uh, but that's Rafi Farber and Ryan Gavrielli uh who have a similar view i'll be fair to admit but i think they're going for the truth and i think a lot of the people watching this channel have similar views on that um i think there's a lot of people in the united states that are very much in the hey putin's hitler let's go get him and I guess that's another one of the things that really concerns me with the U.S. because it's one thing, you know, when things break and you can rebuild, but just seeing the way that uh, the, the thinking of people is so distorted. I was reading, uh, what's it, Jen Psaki paid <laughs> TikTok influencers to, to shill out their version of the story. So weird times out there. Although what we can count on is CEO Larry Flink of BlackRock. Go figure this, a banker telling the truth. I know you're not going to believe me, so hear it for yourself. Our behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. Now, I'm not sure if he was talking specifically about forcing how you should think and trade in the silver market by uh, using SLV, basically another means of expanding the theoretical silver supply, <clears throat> but we'll see how that one works out. In either case, Larry, thanks for your completely communist view and exposing yourself as the globalist that you are, uh, in case um, some people didn't know that, but appreciate you putting it on the record here we see russia says <coughs> excuse me <coughs> nato peacekeepers inside ukraine will ensure direct clash <clears throat> now i never really paid too much attention to that whole nato and nafta and all these government deals um, <laughs> it, was, it was funny i remember a time where i had no interest in politics i think i still don't um i'm more looking at this as a defense policy like how can i keep myself safe from government how can i help keep my fellow arcadians safe from this governmental nonsense and on a side note here <clears throat> you know i know i've said this before and at times do better than others of implementing said policy yet all right we know silver is manipulated and rigged and you know and that's still fun to talk about from time to time and it is a silver developments yet Maybe it was the legal letter where it feels like a large burden has been lifted, where at least, you know, at some point you get the evidence out there. Maybe the courts will do something, maybe not yet. You know, we've, we've talked about a lot of this stuff that we thought would happen. Now it's happening. And, you know, through all of that, I mean, there's things that are unfortunate, but can you go and live a good and fun life? Can we find some section on the planet where uh, people can get together There's, or some have some sort of community where at least uh, for those who want to live around others that are seeing the same planet and have some of the same ideals? Um, I think that's still possible. And that's, you know, what I'll be focusing on. That's part of what I was searching for in Mexico is there a place where I feel comfortable and then you know, having a lot of friends back in the U.S. and some of them have been down here and, you know, uh, hopefully for Silverfest this year, we'll have, uh, we'll be able to do it in person. And, you know, maybe some people come and not want to go back or, or you know, or someone want to come at another time or maybe we'll find ways to meet in the U.S., but really just getting people together so that whatever these governments do, you know, you have a network of people that you can discuss things with, you know, if the 
food is there's food issues in your area and you need to go somewhere else that there's different people that you know at least have some similar views and you know are good people so that's uh one of the things that we've been doing a lot of cool things happening behind the scenes we've been doing a lot of stuff that finally it will almost be time to share more about and reveal so yes the videos are nice and although it's, it's, i'll say for me it's been really nice having rafi do the report uh we have some other people who are going to start doing some videos uh because i do like doing the videos although i also enjoy doing a lot of the things that are not on camera <clears throat> so just finding a nice balance for all of that and uh, with that said we will continue on here so with the whole nato thing you know never really following that too closely it seems like another u.s-led military thing and you know, here it is, like, how are they supposed to feel, you know, seeing the way the U.S. has gone and, and started military conflict around the globe, then they have NATO in there, they have the CIA training, Nazis in there. So, uh, I don't know, people can feel them on one side of the team or the planet versus the other. Just trying to figure out what happens. Here's an interesting one. That looks like Zelly. he's tell it he's he's ordering joe biden around what to do <clears throat> excuse me ukrainian president asked biden not to sanction abramovich to facilitate peace talks so earlier this month u.s treasury department officials said janet janet drafted a set of sanctions to publish roman roman abramovich <clears throat> following the attack on ukraine now you could phrase this following Russia attacking. Well, I'll leave that aside. I'll leave my, I think I've stated my opinion there. <laughs> it's just interesting the way these are phrased. And uh, when it came time to announce those sanctions, uh, White House security said, hold off. Reason is that Zelly advised Biden in a recent phone call to wait on sanction the oligarch who might proved as an important go-between with Russia in helping to negotiate peace. Now, I would say if it turns out to be the case that Zelly is not crack partners with Hunter Biden, as many in the internet are suggesting, uh, then, you know, that would perhaps lead one to feel a little safer. Although if they are crack buddies, that could be a little less advantageous you know, because who knows what uh, Roman Abramovich is doing or why they are giving him a pass. Well, basically, the Biden administration is saying anybody else who's ever been in Russia or is Russian is the bad guy, which seems a bit racist to me. All these government policies seem racist. Uh, I don't know. I grew up born in 78. I remember watching Rocky Four, and it's like, supposed to not like that guy just because he was born on that side of the line and <laughs> seems a little racist to me but um you know again i know to be clear i'm not trying to compare that to anybody else uh been racially persecuted or anything just swinging away at the government pinata oh and here's my boy ned price state department spokesman ned price declined to comment specifically on the sanctions he's like the gen saki of the war machine he just declines to comment he doesn't offer to circle back so ned once again saying nothing why don't they put like a just like a bobblehead doll there when you ask Ned a question <laughs> they could just sit like shaking its head up and down they could just shake its head side to side and say i can't i can't tell i know nothing so thanks ned maybe jen's his girlfriend who knows but check this one out <clears throat> the push to central back digital currencies much watched must watch joe rogan learning about cbdc's sound on all right here we go i'll leave my comment aside we'll um what they want to do is bring in this uh, thing called the central banking digital currency they want to replace fiat paper money with digital money as a competitor to Bitcoin and crypto money, right? But instead of being a decentralized currency, it will be controlled by a government. It's digital currency, but controlled centrally through the banks, Bank of England. 
So instead of having a bank account with whatever, HSBC or Bank of America, you have a bank account directly within the American context with the Fed. In the UK, directly with the Bank of England. You have a personal bank account and you're given digital money in that bank account. These are called central banking digital currencies. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK has already announced their intention to do this as the G7 group. And these are, if you look up... Um, this sounds terrifying. If you look way. up uh, the Telegraph newspaper. Uh, Central bank digital courtesy, uh, currency, that, is uh, that the one down below? Digital currency should be programmable. See that one there? Yeah. Now what yeah. they're doing is they're saying, you know, everyone knows that with inflation at over 5%, it's now 5.4%, right? Uh, our fiat money, the paper money, is increasingly becoming worthless and we're headed towards a big disaster. They, the Fed wants to raise interest rates. But we're in so much debt that if you raise interest rates, people are going to suffer because everyone that the you know we're living on debt as western economies so they realize that this kind of the lifespan of paper money is fast coming to an end because of the 2008 economic crash in particular so they're bringing in these central banking digital currencies why is that word programmable in there so what they said in that article and the and the chance to put a video out saying this as well they've said that this money that you will earn from work instead of having paper money you have this digital money it's programmable so that you can't buy certain foods or if you do something that your employer doesn't like it's all in that article you won't be able to spend your money in other words it's not money <clears throat> well there you go um, i cannot confirm the rumor that you would need the microchip to buy cheerios as long as you didn't offend your boss you're saying anything negative about joe biden um what's going to happen with cryptos and central bank digital currencies i don't have the first clue but um not for me shall we say and with that said great column from craig hemke today who didn't sound like he was having the most fun time of it <clears throat> by the way nickel up 15 percent. that's limit up so it looks like the lme's attempt to price that one didn't go so well again and we'll cover him because now LME boss says banks are partly to blame. So at least someone wants to blame JP Morgan. And certainly I think that's something that everybody can support. Uh, bipartisan diplomacy at its finest. So here, uh, here's Craig talking about the LME thing. Although the, the shocking part uh, resumed last week, we discussed that they were, the LME was hoping to reset price all the way back down to 30,000. Well, he nailed it on that. Um, I guess we don't have the whole chart there, but uh, well, that's exactly what happened. The price hit that level yesterday, but look at what happened today. Shot back up the limit of 15%. So what did the LMA do the same as before? They halted trading and canceled the trades again. So basically, if it goes up, they cancel the trades and they keep changing the policies until it goes down. I mean, this is like make it's it's making like a mockery out of things it's 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 like by the day it's beyond silly where it's like that, that's why i i feel almost and I, I can't know this but it it all we we hear about how many of these wars the rothschilds know before they make money on the way down on the way back up I keep, I keep getting a feeling of that thing from September 11th where you hear Larry Silverstein say, Let, we pull it. You know, we made the decision to pull it. You know, where it's like someone has made the decision, all right, we're doing it and things going to blow up. That's what it feels like they're doing with the economy. By the way, the guy who was short big shot, as he's known, his broker was on the hook for the margin calls of J.P. Morgan. Canceling trades and closing exchange for days, okay. Reopening with rules to ensure limit down days, that's okay. Seeing price go back up the limit, not okay. And uh, rightly points out, where's the investigations here? I mean, this is same, very similar to what happened to Silver in 1980. Meanwhile, Pelosi was not around to comment on that because she was exercising her 25 call options Tesla. She bought the 25 strikers? Goodness. <coughs> so as you know, we've talked about on the show before what a great investor Nancy is. Um, crushing it on Tesla. 
I think there was one other note he may have had in here that I wanted to share. Oh, yeah, there we go. Don't forget uh, Trafigura, some commodities. Every commodity or trader hit with massive margin calls. So doesn't seem like things are too stable. Sky high fertilizer prices have farmers worldwide scaling back. This is, again, what's really concerning to me. I mean, obviously, the silver is, you know, that's concerning in its own right you know although the, the, there's i guess i'm feeling like yeah there's the one hand i hope silver eventually goes up so that you know the value of things i've saved is more appropriate to the cost of things yet you know here it's like are they really going to keep pushing this and, and starve people to death is that really how this is going to happen and i hope not but uh anyway hope people are being safe out there and preparing as much as you can and again uh you know i've been floating around mexico without really much of you know a, a specific home so i'm not as advanced in the prepper thing but again that's why i think the at least having a network that if you could find uh I think we have on the Arcadia site, the community, which now has a Discord server in there. We're getting a bunch of stuff set up. I'm not sure if that's loading properly here. But anyway, you know, you have the chats in the comments, uh, the videos, and you can always email in. A lot of people do email. Uh, so there's ways to reach people. Anyway. Quick note, as tonight's video is sponsored by BlackRock Silver, that recently closed a $5 million Canadian private placement with Eric Sprott, BlackRock, a supporter of the show, who uh, is out there finding silver, things going well, and we're going to have Andrew of BlackRock on next Tuesday, the 29th, possibly with Keith Newmeyer of First Majestic Silver, who has also been involved with BlackRock Silver. So thank you, BlackRock and Andrew. Uh, looking forward to having him back on and usually take some questions. I know we have a lot of BlackRock Silver fans out there. So tonight's video, if you're having fun, say a thank you at home to BlackRock and Andrew Pollard. And with that said, a few more before we wrap up. Here's Zero Hedge gas stations will run dry. <clears throat> And what's Joe Biden's plan to blame it on Putin? Well, that's not really the kind of plan that I like. How, here, House Democrats want to stop oil inflation by creating money out of thin air, offering Americans direct payments. I think I saw something about Gavin Newsom was going to offer like $400 vouchers. How he's going to pay for that uh, was not as well made clear. See if we can get this one to, uh, yep, energy rebate. So we don't have gas, but we're going to print more money and hope that solves the inflation thing. So <laughs> best of luck with that, fellas. And here, I mean, just scroll. Oh, here we go. Newsom wants to give $400 debit cards to California car owners because Putin invaded Ukraine. I mean, this is insane. Look at these. Pentagon scrambles to restock weapons sent to Ukraine. So prices are soaring at home. The debt is soaring. And they're, they're building more mess, missiles. And just sending it to a guy with a really shady, checkered past. Here, eating lentils. They're, they're telling people to cut back on food. What kind of foods you can eat. So to offset inflation, you give people more money. I mean, you know, it's like as I'm going through these uh, headlines, they pop up on my phone. So it's just U.S. State Department says embassy in Russia receive a list of diplomats declared persona non grata. So it doesn't seem like that's going better. You know, just trust us, the politicians of the world. China joins Russia in backing its statement. So 
Ukrainian officials plead with Chinese drone maker to stop use of Russian military. Miami declares state of emergency after spring break. Uh, hopefully better news tomorrow. I guess <laughs> I can leave that one. LME boss says banks are partly to blame for nickel squeeze. He doesn't strike me as if he has the situation under control. That's Matthew Chamberlain. Uh, was rebuffed by a number of banks. I don't think we'll allow it to be rebuffed again. Best of luck with that. It's kind of like the Fed. At some point, I think people will not care what they say or do. Sure seems like we're getting close to that. And... Uh, unfortunate the things that we are seeing out there in the world uh, especially the with with the food i mean this is coming after everything they just did with the corona for the last two years so uh, i guess the best we can do is just prepare understand what's coming and what's happening and uh that's why a little bit of a cold today i'm fine not covid or anything just some allergies but uh, I feel grateful that at least uh, hopefully in some way it's helpful to share the things I'm seeing and try and mix in a few jokes here and there to bring a smile to your face and uh, remind you that, all right, you know, there's all this stuff, uh, much of which is unfortunate, but, you know, I, I at least for me, it, you know, there's some days it's easier to see this than others, but, you know, when taking a step back and that we do have all the people that are out there that watch this or participate or the other channels that there are good people out there. And I think it will be down to us to help rebuild and install some sanity into this world. How's oh, that Craig Matthews from Australia? Good day, mate. How are you doing up there? Guess uh, maybe breakfast time. Michael Martin. Hello there, sir. Good to see you. Um, yeah, and I appreciate all you being out there. I mean, it's certainly been uh, different than I ever expected my life to go. And yet now uh, you see who's running the show, the way these guys make decisions. And uh, I would just suggest to each of you watching this right now, you know, maybe you think, hey, I'm just some dude who's trying to, you know, figure my own life out and keep things together. Well, you know, the more that you feel empowered and take good care of yourself, there's going to be other people out there that probably did not see these things coming. So um, kind of like that old, uh, the way they said it went down with Moses, where God calls on him and says, all right, buddy, go lead the troops. It was like, where are you talking to me? So, uh, but maybe that's how these things go. And, uh, you know, by all means, start and take care of yourself and just lead a good life and then uh, at least that's the best I've been able to figure out of how we can make any positive impact in some challenging conditions. But I like to think we were put on this earth for some reason. So um, that is my parting words of philosophical wisdom tonight. I've been getting a break from all the technical silver stuff. And I'm happy to have a little more time, mix back some music. I'm going to go play some fish tunes and wish everybody a good night, but I thank you for being here, and uh, hopefully you're having fun out there, and who knows what will happen tomorrow, but Rafi's Silver Report is expected to be on Thursday this week, so I know my man will have it covered. Have a great night, everybody, and I will see you again soon. <coughs>